Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at multiplication and division instructions. So we're going to look at these instructions right here. And we'll be stopping at IDiv instructions. So first of all, so we all are using the same terminology. Multiplicand is this top number, multiplier is what we're multiplying by, and this is the product. And we're looking at multiplication. So the MUL instruction is used for multiplication. It's used for unsigned multiplication. We can uh, multiply by 8, 16, or 32-bit operands. So we're either going to use the AL, AX, or EAX register. So the multiplicand, let's say that we're doing 8-bit multiplication. The multiplicand will be in AL. The multiplier will be in a register or a memory location. And the product is going to be found in AX. If we're doing 16-bit multiplication, the multiplicand will be in AX. Here's the multiplier. And then the product is going to be in DX in both the DX register and the AX register. So if you think about it, if you're doing a 16-bit multiplication, then you're going to need more room, right, than 16 bits. So you need at least 32 bits. So we're going to be using both the DX and the AX register. Now, we may not use the DX register. Like if you multiply, let's say, um, I don't know, 100 times 10, that will give you 1,000. That's going to fit in just the AX register. If you do 100 times 1,000, then you'll need both the DX and the AX register. And then the last one, is, last example here, is if we're doing 32-bit operations. So let's take a look at some examples so this makes a little more sense. So in this example, we're multiplying 100 times 200. I'm sorry, 100 hexadecimal times 2,000 hexadecimal. And we're using 16-bit operands. Now, we could use 32-bit operands, but we're not. We're just showing this example using 16-bit. Okay, that was a question that came in uh, in the classroom. So the 2,000, they're putting into a variable, the 100 into a variable. They're moving variable 1 into AX. So we have to... If you look at this, we have to use AX because it's expecting, MUL instruction is expecting that we use AX. And it's expecting the multiplicand to be there. So that's why we put it into AX. And then VAL2, it can be a variable or it can be a register. Here we decided to use a variable. So we're taking the 100 multiplying it times 2,000, and AX contains, so because 2,000 times 100 is um, 200,000, so let's write this down. So we have two, and then we have one, two, three zeros. And we're multiplying it times 100. So we're just gonna add two zeros to the back here. Then these four zeros are gonna be in the AX register. And the 20 with two zeros in front of it will be in the DX register. Remember these registers can hold 16 
So these are 16-bit operands. Um, so when you run this, I want you to go ahead and run it. So take a minute, open up Visual Studio and run this. When you run this, you're gonna see that part of your answer is in the DX register and part of your answer is in the AX register. And then there's this control flag here that gets set. So if the DX register has, it's not all zeros, it actually has part of your answer, then CF is set to one. But if you see down here, if the register, if this register DX is all zeros, then CF gets set to zero, the control flag. The reason it does that is so that, you know, if the control flag is one, you're gonna know that your answer is in two registers. If your control flag is zero, you know that your answer is just in the AX register. So let's see. Let's look at this right here. Let me clear this writing. That's not what I meant to do. So what I'm going to do is, this is for a different example. OK, so first we're going to move into AX. Um, Val 1. And then we're going to See what we did. We moved into AX, Val 1, and then we multiplied by Val 2. Now, the way this works, because there's only one operand, this instruction, MEL, knows to take this variable, Val 2, and multiply it times AX. You're not telling it. And Again, the answer is going to go into DX AX. So since it's going into DX AX, what I would do is I would clear my AX register. And I would also clear, oops, not EAX, not EAX. And let's clear the So the answer goes into DX also. So clear DX. And then let's put a break. Put a break right there. And then run this. So EAX gets cleared, EDX gets cleared with zeros. The next step is we move VAL1 into AX. So VAL1 is 2000 hex. And then we're gonna take that 2000 hex and multiply it by 100. So there's a 20 there. If you look at EDX, there's 20 and EAX is all zeros. Remember part of the val part of the value went into, and I'm sorry, not EAX, but AX has zeros and DX has a 20. So the, the answer is 200,000 and we need two registers for that answer. And then if you look at the, con the carry, the control flag, the control flag is set to one and what that means is that 
my DX register has a number, it's not zero. It's not all zeros. So this is DX, it's four numbers. So it lets me know that my number carried into the DX register. All right, let's look at. In this next example here, we are multiplying 12,345x times 1,000. And we're using 32-bit operand operations or operands. So we first move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into EAX. MUL expects something to be in EAX. And that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then that's a multiplicand. The multiplier, we this time, instead of putting it into a variable, they put the multiplier into a, a register. So they put it into EBX. You can use any other register, just don't use EDX. Well, I guess you could use EDX. Um, yeah, let's just get cleared out. And then, so when you multiply these two numbers, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, and then three zeros at the end. And so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're gonna have an you can have eight digits and eight digits fits into EAX, right? Because EAX is eight bits. So that's going to fit into EAX. EDX is just going to be zeroed out. And our carry flag is going to be zero because we're not carrying any of this number into EDX. So stop and run that one. And make sure that you see the registers and the carry flag get set. So here it just says the carry flag indicates whether or not the upper half of the product contains significant digits. So in this example, it doesn't contain any significant digits, it just contains zeros. So your turn, go ahead and you're gonna pause the video um, and then figure out on paper first and then you can type it in. So what will be the hexadecimal value of DX and AX and what's the carry flag? So pause it. So we multiply 1,234 uh, 1, by 100. That gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0. 3, 4, 0, 0 will be an AX. DX will contain 1, 2. One, two three, four, this is the product, right? One, 1,234 times 100 gives us this. These four numbers are gonna be in AX. That's all that fits in AX. And we're gonna carry the 12 into DX and DX will have the 12. Put two zeros in front of it at first because we carried carry flag is set to one. Okay, now do this one. What will be the hexadecimal values of EDX and EAX and the carry flag after the following instructions are executed? In this case, we have this number We have one, we have two, we have eight, we have seven, six, five. And that's multiplied times one, two, three, four. So that's 10,000. We have four zeros, so we're going to have four zeros at the end. So this times 10,000. 
And remember that it goes into EDX. The answer goes into EDX and EAX. So EAX is going to contain, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits. So it contains this number. And then this, this 12 will be carried into EDX. Carry flag will get set. Type this in, make sure that you see this in the registers. This will be EDX right here. E, that's not an E, <laughs> EDX. And then this will be EAX. Um, we're going to use IMUL to do sign integer multiplication. So, for example, if we multiply, um, so basically what it's saying here is that when you do IMUL, it preserves the sign of the product by sign extending it into the upper half of the destination register. So in this example, we're using 8-bit operands, but our numbers are... Our numbers are positive, so we have 48 that we put into AL, 4 into BL, we multiply 4 times 48. Notice the answer does not go into BL, the answer goes into AX always. And it's not sign extended, so it's not going to be a, um, a negative number. So in this particular case, we have a positive number times a negative number. And in this case, it will sign extend. So because it's sign extending, so two things to notice here. One, this here, we cut this in half. This is EAX on this side. And the other side is EDX, right? This side is EDX. Because EDX is all a sign and doesn't have any values, doesn't have any significant digits, then overflow flag is zero because we did not overflow into EDX. So EDX here is just a sign extension of EAX. So go ahead and try this one here. We want to know what will be the hexadecimal decimal hexadecimal values in DX and AX. So we're doing 16-bit multiplication. I mean, yeah, multiplication, sign multiplication. And what's the carry flag after the following instructions execute? So go ahead and pause it and try to figure that one out. Okay, so we're going to multiply 8760 and 8760 times 100 is 8760,00. That's 876,000 in hex. So 1234 cut it like this. This will be AX. AX will be 6,000 H. And and that will be 
dx. Our overflow flag will be one because we overflowed into dx. So this is dx, this is ax. Okay, this is um, how we use IMUL with two operands and three operands. So IMUL can be used with one operand, two operands, or three operands. If you have two operands, the first operand has to be the has to be a register. The next one can be a register or a memory location but it can only be eight or 16 bits if we're doing 16 bit operation. 32 bit operation, the second operand can be 32 or uh, a 32 memory. Okay, so these here are immediate values. The memory, memory has to be 16 bits, but the immediate values can be eight or 16. Remember, our immediate values are just constants, like a five or a 100, 3,000. So what we're doing with these is we're taking this number, let's say it's an immediate value, there's a five here. Um, we're taking that five, so let's say we have five, and we're gonna multiply by whatever's in this register. And here, if we have a five in memory, we'll multiply that times what's in that register and it gets put back in that register. So it works like the add. Let's look at an example. This is the three operand that first, um, yeah, I don't have an example here, but there's an example in your book and I think I do have that open. Let me escape that out of here. Okay, I don't have it open. But I will show you with Let's move all these things out of the way. So in this example here, we have um, moves zero into EAX and BX. So we're clearing our registers. And then here, what we would do is we would multiply. So we would have like a X by val two. And then the value would go into AX. And again, I could put a number here. I could say five, or I could put another register. If I had another register with the value, I could put the, the register there. Um, Show you some other examples in our book. So in your book, um, what I would like you to do is enter, your book looks a little different than mine, but I want you to enter these examples, let's see, right here. So here you have a lot of examples that show you the different variety of things that you can do with a two operand multiplication, sign multiplication. So remember IMUL is for sign multiplication. So here is 16 bit and this is 32 bits.
Okay, so let's go back to here. So with the three operands, um, what you have is here you would say multiply this, let's say there's a five here and a memory location and a register. So you say multiply five times whatever number is in this memory or register and put it into this register here. So it has three operands, register, register, memory location, immediate value. And in your book, there's an example that you can type up and look at for three. So here's an example right here. So it's taking um, IMUL, you have BX word one, negative 16. So it says BX equals word one times 16. So multiply word one times negative 16 and put it into BX. Same thing here, EDX equals. And this last example here gives us a um, an overflow because this number, there's actually nine zeros right here. So you have 10 bits and we can only have eight bits. Otherwise we're gonna get an overflow. And actually because it's a negative number, we actually need to have one bit for the sign. So there should really, you should only have um, seven zeros plus the two and the negative and then multiply times to double word. So when you try this one out, try it out with nine zeros then take out two of the, two of the zeros and then you'll see a good, um, a good value in EBX. But with, with these three operands, the, you're gonna see the answers in this last operand which is this first operand, which is the register. That's where you see the ease. And that's why these have to always be registers. You cannot put a variable in here, okay? Make sure you're stopping at each one of these and running them. So in the classroom, I don't go this fast. I actually stop, everybody enters everything. And then we look at the registers. So make sure you look at the registers for each one of these. All right, in the next example, we have, let's see what we have here. We have division. So the division, the quotient is your answer. The dividend is this number that's inside, um, inside the, I forgot what this is called, but in here, what we're, div what, what we're dividing by um, and this is our divisor. So we're saying 24 divided by four is six. So our dividend is big. Our dividend is in, in here, right? So our dividend is large. Like you can say 10,000 divided by four because our dividend is gonna be large. Our answer is gonna be small because we're dividing. So our dividend can take one, two, one or two registers. Our quotient, our answer quotient is only gonna take one register and our remainder is gonna take one register. So these that have two dividends, you would build the dividend. And the way you build the dividend is you say something like, okay, move into DX 6,000 move into AX 3,433. Now you're building DX and AX. And we'll look at an example of how we do that. So let's look at this slide for division. So here, we're gonna clear the high, the dividend in the high um, register. And the reason we cleared it is because our dividend is just 8,003. So it fits into AX. So we don't need DX. We're just gonna clear it. And 
the, the DIV instruction actually uses DX and AX. So even though it has a zero, it'll divide a DX and AX. So we need to clear it out, okay? This is important. So then we divide by 100. So we say divide AX by CX and put the answer into AX. So the AX contains our portion, which is the answer, which is 80. So 8,003 divided by 180 with a remainder of three. The remainder goes into DX. We do the same thing with 32 operands, except the, um, this is wrong right here. The remainder actually goes into EDX. EDX has the remainder. But typically the um, remainder just fits into DX. And then BAX will contain our answer, which is the quotient. So go ahead and type both of these in and run them so you can see you can see the answer for these. So here's an example that I want you to try on your own on paper before you type it in. Here's what I was talking about. We're going to build the quotient. I mean the dividend, sorry. We're going to build, build the dividend. So we have dx and ax. dx is first. So 0, 0, 8, 7. And then ax is 6,000. So this is the dividend. This is the number that's inside. The, it's called, I think it's called the radical inside the radical, if I remember this terminology correctly. And then div instruction looks at these two registers, which is this number, and it divides it by bx, and bx is 100, right? So when we divide it by bx, 100, Let's see what our answer is going to be. So DX contains zeros. And the answer is going to go into DX and AX. The DX will have zeros. And AX, and actually, this is the remainder, sorry. So the AX will contain the quotient. So this is the answer, 8,760 is this number divided by 100. And the remainder is going to be zero. So hopefully that made sense. Here is where we're, we're building the number. We need two registers because we have something bigger than eight um, than 16 bits. Now we could use um, EAX, right? We could use 32 bit register, but we're just not. We're just wanting to show you how it, you can build a number. Okay, let's erase this. Get all drawings. Go to the next example. So in this example, it says, what will be the hexadecimal values of DX and AX after the following instructions execute? Or if you divide and an, over and an overflow occurs, you can just indicate that as your answer. So pause it, do this, and then pause it to see the answer. So we're taking eight, seven, we're building a number, eight, seven, And then 6,002. Okay, so we built our number. We're going to divide this whole number by 10. Now, when you divide this by 10, remember that your answer is going to go into AX, right? And AX can only hold 16 
bits, which is four digits. Well, the answer to this is going to be more than four digits. It's going to be well, the answer is going to be eighty-seven thousand six hundred. It has now overflowed. It doesn't fit doesn't fit into AX, so so it sets the overflow flag, and you don't get the correct answer because it overflowed. Make sure you run this one so you can see how it behaves. So when 10 is, when we divide this number with, by 10, the quotient is this number. You could only fit 7,600 into AX, so it overflows. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. And in the next one, um, I'm going to show you how we do signed integer division.